Just letting y'all know that we got a lot of content coming. Let y'all know this right here, the original platform right now for some of that real uncut raw, sh especially coming from the West Coast. Subscribe, click, 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 subscribe. Dub C, CJ Mac Show. What up, C Mac behind the camera? Dub C and CJ. Uh huh. Dub, Dub C and CJ. What you looking at? Dub, Dub C and CJ. Dub C and CJ. Dub C and CJ Mac Show. Welcome back to the Dub C and CJ Mack Show. Once again, y'all, I am Dub C. And I am CJ Mack. What up, C Mack? Good, bro, bro. What's happening, man? man? We just chilling. We right back at it, man. Back at I it. I love it. We working. I love working, we man. feel good. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel right if we ain't got a camera on somewhere oh, right here. I hear a lot. I'm starting to get hooked on this. I hear a lot of shh talking right now. Oh. I hear oh. a lot of shh. Oh, that must be today's guest, man. Hey. Huh? That must be today's guest, Today's man. guest. Today's guest is the most competitive person I know. He talked most than a little. I, I, it's, oh man! Yeah, sometimes you know, even my partner. Sometimes it's even a little hard to take because he be, he, right, he be right. Because he, he can back it up. He, be, yeah. he really a bad yeah. man, man. Yeah. So today, man, we got nine time NBA All Star, Defensive Player of the Year, Come on Lead now. the League, Come on now. Assists, Steals. What? We got Gary Payton. Better known as the, the, the motherfucking oh. <laughs> I love the swag, What's up, bro, man. Bro? What's happening with y'all, man? I man. love the confidence, man, because I got a chance to, to kick it with you, you know, over the, the past few years through 40 and CJ, and you the same on and off the court, man. You real competitive, and I just love the passion, man. Even walking up in there before we got the film, and him and CJ, y'all know him and CJ go back with these dominoes. Oh, don't say it. Oh! Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Because usually, look, 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 look. usually look. if G say dominoes around me, somebody ordering a pizza. Uh oh. You know what I'm no, saying? No, no, no. I'm doing like this. Scared. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing like this on you. And you scared. You know what I'm saying? Don't get to that. Yeah, that, that ain't going to work right here. Okay. You all right. usually drunk. <laughs> yeah, or you do it like to have a push up. Oh. You either buck or you drunk. You know what it is. You know that. So the drunk comes in what? When you lose, you got to drink? When you Absolutely. lose, around him, you got to drink. But since I don't drink no more. Right. You be out to push ups. <laughs> you yeah. tighten the up. Yeah, I got to push ups. And I love it because he don't drink. It, it makes it better for me. Oh, no. Because I like to see him swole up in the air. You be hurting up in here. I love it. Hey, you love all that. Y'all be getting on swole lately, man. Oh, you got a Ramadan. I yeah, lost yeah. a little bit, but I be mad. A Ramadan I'm or, 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 or the GB? Yeah, GB, yeah, you know. he ain't did nothing, Look, bro. He talk about whooping me more than he actually whoops me. I, Dub, I don't want to do it because Dub is okay, seventy. Okay. If we played a hundred times, Dub, I beat him seventy-five times. See, that's a that's a that's a fact. You don't believe that, and he know that. You don't believe that. You know what I'm saying? You if we that. was on the playgrounds and they said let's have a dominant <laughs> tournament, and I was the first pick, I could pick the first. <laughs> pick. I he just like you just said, I would pick you last. I would not even pick you because I don't want to play with y'all. Even want you on my team. I just I'm, I'm gonna get at you. you know, <laughs> see, no wonder you got those steals. You just stole my love. Oh yeah, you stole my love. Right? That's why they call me the, the glove. <laughs> It's, oh. Hey man, well thank you for coming today, man. We really appreciate you, man. I know you got a lot going on, you know. So thank you for stopping through, man. You know, I just wanted, you know, our people to get to know you a little bit, like I know you, man. You know, you a one dude, man of your word, man. You solid. You don't play no games, and and, and you'll put a man around a whole lot of money. You just got to know what to do once you get around. There, man. <laughs> hey, you know what, see. And Dub, I just want to thank y'all, man, for bringing me on here, man. I'm, I'm proud of y'all for having this podcast. Thank and you. One of the things that y'all do in the hood where y'all come from, you know, we was together in uh, Detroit when y'all y'all yeah. two came and followed me when I was playing with the Lakers, man. Went up in there, man. Y'all stood up with me, man, when all them Detroit fans was acting crazy. Oh, you know, man, all got all up, that. walking yeah. to the bathroom. Yeah. I'm hearing boo. Yeah, and I'm you, looking at the pops. <laughs> yeah. All that, man. Yeah. So. You know, me and all of us two, us, us three done been through a lot of stuff, man, for years, man. Yeah. And people probably don't know that. No. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's always a pleasure to, do, to be on what family. Y'all like family. And that's what yeah. it is, you know what man. You, you know that's what? what it is. You know, you know what, 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 what really um, validated that with me, our relationship is I haven't seen you in a while since my brother died. Right. Right. And we went to a big three game at the Staples Center at the time. And I walked back there. He was in there uh, talking to his team. 
And I walked in. I wasn't supposed to walk in. You know, at the time, I walked, walked in. And he said, hey. He said, oh, he said, what's up, Doug? He said, give me a second. He said, hey, man. He said, um, condolences, man, a little bro. And I said, damn. He, like, shook me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, shook me, shook me. Like, if mm -hmm. I was at the funeral, shook me. I'm like, whoa. And um, I said, much love. And I walked out. And it just, right there, man, I knew that by me not seeing him or talking to him in a while, and for him to, you know, to hit me with that right there, I just said, man, I said, GP is all right with me, man. That's oh, yeah. family. Yeah. That's family yeah. right yeah. there, man. Yeah. You always got our support, man, no matter what, for the simple fact that you always been the same. You walking here talking shit right now, man. <laughs> always been the same. Yeah, yeah. he ain't gonna yeah. do nothing but. He's the most competitive person I know, man. I don't care if it's bowling. I don't care if it's cars. We can play Jackson. He, he gonna want to win, right? Hopscotch. So, yeah. so where did that come from, man? Where did this, 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 this love of winning come from <laughs> see you know growing up y'all can contest this y'all growing up in la and y'all growing up in the hood i'm growing up in oakland i'm growing up in the hood it was a competitiveness everywhere that we went you right. know what i'm saying my daddy was my coach my daddy was a they called him mr mean he was a rough little dude man and and what happened was is that when i went out on them streets and became who I was to play basketball people always wanted to try to take me or take my manhood away from me or take it away from me and I grew up saying, nah, I ain't, that ain't going to happen. My daddy always told me, whatever you step on anything and try to do it, I don't care if it's your mama or it's me, tear their head off hmm. because they're trying to take it from you and you trying to stay at that top. Wow. Because if a person is down there as a point guard and he working out with you and doing the same thing, but we got to understand if we both in the league, you trying to be the number one point like I'm trying to be the number one point. So why am I working out with you? Why am I giving you all my game to see how you can come and play with me to overtake what I'm getting? Hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going to stay at top and you're going to look up to me. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I did, had to do Jason Kidd. I had to do all them little kids, uh, Jamal Crawford, them dudes trying to chase me. Hmm. But I'm a competitive. I don't care what it is. I play against whoever. I want to win. That's right. just me. I'm just a winner. I'm not going to be a loser. That's just like following somebody. I'm not following nobody. I'm the king. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm going to beat you, I want to beat you. And if, especially if I'm talking crazy. I got to keep my crazy talking so I can know that I can be that one. Yeah. I'm the dominant one. So when they come, they're going to be like, yo, I think a GP coming. I know I got to step my game. Because <laughs> either he going to bust my head open and he going to talk crazy and make us look funny and, and everybody be laughing. So I got to be ready. So that's what I put everybody on the edge of. And that's what I do. So I don't go and go and play nothing just for fun. Right. I don't play right. that for fun. He, he, if I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it to win. Because I like to walk out with my chest big as hell. And I want everybody to understand that I'm competitive in everything I do. I don't <laughs> yeah. care what it is. If I want, if a girl comes to me and talking about she want to braid hair, give me two weeks and let me learn how to braid hair. I'll, I'll, do, <laughs> I'll, braid your I'll do your hair. I'll braid your hair better than you. You right. know what I'm saying? And right. let me do it. Especially if we're putting something up for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the way I am. I've just been that way all my life. And I tell you, somebody told me the other day, I told him he was coming on the show, he said, man, I think I can handle, I can handle G on the court. I said, nope, I tried that. Talk, talk to, <laughs> hey, talk. I re, look, 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 I remember the story. Y'all don't, look. He don't. <laughs> look, y'all don't, y'all don't be hearing some of the shit. I'll be hearing. Yeah. Tell, tell them the story. So, so I'm, we in this house in the backyard, man, and we playing, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to go back here and play. You know, I think I, I got a cool set shot of nothing else, you know what I'm saying? Man, this dude got super serious on me like this in the championship, man. You heard what you just said? Man, no. he's backing me down and damn near knocking me down, jumping up. I'm like, game, yeah, say, man. This is, the camera's not on, brother. You know what I'm saying? You want to slow down a little he, bit? He, he like, get your ass up out of here, then. I'm like, damn, to let you know. man. And let's go play. We homies off the court, man. We can go, whatever we're going to do, drink, go out, party, whatever we're going to do, man. We can, whatever. But when we on this court, I'm being competitive, man. You yeah. shouldn't have stepped, stepped your ass on the court yeah. because I'm going to get yeah. at you, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like with y'all, too. I'll be disrespectful to go up in a, in a, in a studio Mike Boo. and try to right. and try to out-rap y'all. Man, I'm crazy as hell. Man, I ain't going to do all of that, man. That's y'all thing, man. Right. I ain't trying to come up in there and talk crazy to y'all because yeah. I know y'all can get at me. But when you, comp when you challenge me on something that I know I can get out on, no, nah, man, I'm gonna have to look at you because if I even give you a chance, even if I let you win one game of right. wars, you're gonna be like, man, homeboy, 
I'll be GPS. Yeah, yeah. Like, nah, you ain't getting at me like that. I right. ain't gonna do that. You gonna always say I'm superior here, and I'm always gonna tell you right. you superior there. Yeah, right. that's how I go. Hey, that make a whole lot of sense to me. <laughs> this thing with Michael Jordan, man. If you don't mind me asking this, I saw this thing where you said whatever you said, and then he got the thing. He was like Gary Payton, like he tried to play it off, like that wasn't happening. You know what I mean? Did you see that? Yeah, on um, on the uh, uh, first, what is it called? One of them things it was. What is it called? His, his documentary. Yeah. So, you know what, see, it's like this. He did that documentary, right? That's his documentary, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, he made it the way he wanted to make it. Right. You know, I wouldn't even respect him if he said that I, I got at his helmet. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. then that means you ain't a competitive dude to me. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So, you supposed to say that on your documentary. Right. But as we know, and we look back on them, on them, on them highlights and them films and, and on that piece of paper. You, they know what GP did. You yeah, know what right. I'm saying? Because he couldn't get at me at the other end. And I was getting at him on one end. Right. He a great basketball player. Y'all you, know that. Oh, you know, they, you know, everybody think he was, he was the greatest. You know what I'm saying? But it is like this. I play basketball the same way and they drafted me the same way. I think I was good too. And I was hella good, as in I was the defensive right. player of the year that year, and he was the right. MVP. Hmm. We had a class, you know what I'm saying? And that's the way it goes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not backing down to nobody. Right. You to go. me, Armand, he go at me, I'm going to guard his helmet back at this way. I'm going to make you guard me too, because I'm not going to let it be easy for you if I'm trying to defend you. Nobody can stop a great player. All right. you can do Period. is contain him. Period. That's all you can try to do is contain him. And I knew I could get out on the other end and score. And I knew he couldn't guard me. So you put the pressure on people like that. And that's what I did. And I told him every time, I ain't scared of you. And it ain't going <laughs> to never happen that way. I'm going to come at your helmet just like you come at my yeah, helmet. Yeah, so yeah. that's just the way it's going to be. And that's why me and him is real cool and close now, because he knew I'd never back down yeah, to right. nothing. Yeah, you can't do yeah. it with respect. I ain't, respect I ain't back level. down to nobody. It's, it's you know what I'm saying? Hey, on, that hey, note, on that note right there, I want to know, who talked the most? Who talked the most? What, was Jordan a big talker? He would when he when he when he get it going and you go at him. Oh, to okay. me, he wasn't like that. He'll say stuff and get down at you, but he wasn't a shit talker. I think Larry Bird and, and Reggie, what? Reggie Miller was the best shit talker. Who? Larry Bird was a cold. And what? Who? Reggie Miller. Reggie. They was the coldest shit talkers oh ever. Oh my God, Lee Wally. Wally. Let me on the wall. Let me on that's Larry good. Bird would yeah, tell yeah, you. Yeah, Larry yeah. Bird would tell you, I'm gonna take you over to this corner. I'm gonna dribble two times. I'm gonna hit your ass in the face, and it, and it bet not touch the rim. Wow. And then he said, if it do, I'm gonna come right back and do it again until it touch it. That's how Larry Bird used to get at. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, Larry Bird was the coldest shit talker ever, man. And he bagged it up because he was so cold. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? So people ask people about him. Motherfucker used to tell you, boy, you can't do. Shit with me. I'm too motherfucking good for this. Wow. I'm going to give you a Christmas present. This jumper in your face. He used to always say this, man. He just seems so mild better, huh? Yeah. So you coming in younger than them. I know you was, was you like, whoa, okay. I know how I got to be around here. Got to be tough with them dudes, man, because they was all, they was already established. So when I was younger, I had to get myself to that level. So that's why everybody be tripping off of why I like John Stockton so much. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Why do because, you like him so much? Because he, he didn't never talk. He was, he, he was just did the game the way it was. And I could never get in his head. He would always walk by <laughs> me like he a zombie. So that pissed me the <laughs> off. You know what I'm saying? So then when he would never say nothing to me, a stone cold face, I'd be like, man, it's some way I got to get at this cat. You know what I'm saying? So then I figured it out. I said, don't say nothing to him. Mm. Go back at his helmet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And start doing, put my game to effect. He'll be, he eventually going to start saying and something. And he'll start giving me respect. Mm -hmm. Then I start doing that. And then he started getting the reactions out of him. When I start hitting him, he started reacting. Right. Because he knew I was getting yeah. his helmet. Yeah. And then the referees wasn't giving him all that stuff. And then I said, oh, I got him. You know, I'm at him now. And then that's when it started to take over. And in 96, when we beat them in the, in, the, in the Western Conference Finals, I said, yo, and I went over the top. You know what I'm saying? And then I started getting, I made first team all league, first team all D. You know, I went to the, to the Olympic team, started right. starting, yeah. all that stuff. So I said, I knew I had did what I had to do. 
And then that's when I became a premier, when I, I became Gary Payton, wow. the, the Hall of Famer, yeah. top 75. That's when it all became. Come on, man. We got the Hall of Famer. Come on, man. Hall of Famer. How can I forget the Put some respect on his name, man. man. That's the homie. Man. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Get the Hall of Famer around here, man. So what do you think the difference is in the league then? Because it was a little rougher to me back then, man. Now I see dudes fall all over the place, man. Right. And, oh, you know what I'm saying? I can't play every day, you know? It was a big difference to me as, as a spectator. Is, it, is, is the game different to you? Very. Dub, and see, it's like this. It's generations, man, and it's eras. Right. Their eras about shooting threes, being finesse, dunking, and a lot of athletes, you know what I'm saying? Right. And that's how they play. I don't think they know how to play the game. I think they know how to use their athletic ability to get it done. You know okay. what I'm saying? If I take a player out there and say run a play and get it done, and we run a, a play and get a person open, it's not going to happen like that. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. In our era, we were more we were more rougher. We had more players on our teams. We had about four or five guys on about seven, eight, nine teams in the NBA who can make the All Star team. Mm. You remember our All Star teams was more competitive. Right. We get at people, yeah, I see. and it was go. it was different. You know what I'm saying? It was different. But we can't knock their era. We can't knock it. Is this what they doing? That's it is what music. it is. Yeah. You can't knock their era, man, no. because it's all going to change. We did it. Our parents and our mom and daddy birthed us at the right time. They birthed us at the right time to get out and get us because they look at us. They sample y'all music. All them youngsters look at y'all music. Right. These young kids is on PlayStation playing with the old school Gary Payton. Mm -hmm. right. That's how they get out. So I don't knock them. I just say it's a little softer basketball when you hit a person and do this and he falls and he start grabbing his head and we got to go over there to the TV and see if it's a flag or yeah. red or all yeah, that yeah, crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy to me. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So it's yeah. a lot different. And when I sit there, and Doug was talking to me about this, how I sit there and I don't make no reactions to my son and all that right. crap. Because, Doug, I'm just going to be honest with you. When I'm sitting over here, I'm thinking about how I play basketball. You know what I'm saying? For those yeah. who don't know what he's talking about, I don't mean to cut you yeah. off. I was telling him how it seemed to me that a lot of times the, the media, the media get upset. And, and, and I could be wrong, or some people might get upset because when, when your son is out there balling, doing his thing, Everybody going crazy. You be sitting there like, you know. Shout saying? out, nephew, by yeah, the way. Yeah, hey, hey, man, keep doing your thing. But yeah. Pops, he be sitting there like a real one, like the ones that we came up under, the coaches that sit there like, okay. You know, he's looking at what can be improved even though you're doing your thing. And it seems like a lot of people get mad about that right there. I hear people like, man, look at GP all looking all hard or whatever. But really, me being, me being a father and being able to coach my kids coming up playing football and different sports, I know what I expect from them. Yeah. And I'm not going to always jump up at times when people go crazy because I'm looking at how they're reacting and what can they do to improve from that right there. Absolutely. And in basketball, I know it's even worse because you got to set up the transition for the next play yeah. for what's going on. So I see you looking and whatnot, and I just, in the media, I'll be reading sometimes and I see people like, look at GP looking all hard and everything, you know. Well, they just try to find anything to say, what did he say to LeBron when LeBron was What are you by? thinking? But y'all know, Dub, that is, that's a good, you, 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 you say it in the right way, Dub. I grew up on a daddy man that wasn't even like that. If I had 40, my daddy said I should have 60. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And he all, he never gave me credit. So when I look at my son, and my son has a hell of an IQ at a bad game of basketball, that's why he changes games because of his IQ and the things he do. I'm not this, I'm not this new, new generation. First of all, the new generation dads, they're basically living through their, their sons mm -hmm. because See, they couldn't do nothing with I never wanted to be that. I never, I, never, case, I, yeah. never wanted to be a dad that lived through. I wanted to live for him. Right. And I, you, with me being who I am and what I did in, in that sport, I can't have my son trying to be looking up to be like me. There's only going to be one Gary Payton, and that's me. And I just name him after me. So I tell him to put his picture aside me and we be together. You got to build your own identity, hmm. not with mine. And that's the way it is. And so when I look there, and what I be thinking, CJ, is you could have did it a long time ago. Mm. You should have did it a long mm. time ago. You figuring it out now. Why not do it all the time? 
and look how easier it will get. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when my son passes up shots, I say, man, take that shot because you're going to make them respect you. Even though you don't make it, sometime you know, in, a, in, a, um, in a minute, you're going to start hitting the mm, shots. Yeah. And then what they're going to do? Then they're going to bring up on you and then your athletic ability will go and then you're going to go in there and you're going to dunk on somebody. He gets his hands on so many balls and he do so of the little things for these basketball teams that it's it's a player that you got to respect. Got to. And you got to respect him because he do so much. And when I sit there, I'm just like, shit, he supposed to. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going, ha ha, hoo hoo, and jump, jump up and down. People, I don't care. I'm not mad. I'm not nothing. I'm just knowing in my in my body that my son should be doing that. Hmm. And it took it too long for people to realize that he sh- he was who was the player he was. Because he worked hard. Worked hard he for didn't, six He years. did not get the nepotism thing. Uh, nah, nah. I'm, I'm little no. Gary, he didn't get none of that. I watched him, man. Right. I watched him come out of high school. We just go to the prep. Uh, and I told him he wasn't shit. I told him he wasn't gonna never make it. And that's what he lived up to. And then all of a sudden for him to go behind me and go to the same college. Yeah. Go and get down at the same college I got for himself. Made a name for himself. And then what hurt him the most is that they didn't draft him. Yeah. And then you see what happened. And now he making $10 million in mo a year because of what he did. Because of the simple fact is that he worked and he grinded and he grinded and he grinded. And he finally got to a team. And I give shots out to Steve Curry, the Golden State Warriors, that gave him an opportunity and an sh- and and ability to get to where he at. Mm. What's the word? Mm. Opportunity. Opportunity. Yeah, opportunity. We're talking about that. And it's an opportunity that he got, and now he's taking advantage of that, and he's doing what he do, you know. At, a, at 30 years old and still probably got about six or seven, eight years left in this league and can get it again and get more, I think all he can do is get better. Gary Payton Jr., man. Congrats, yeah, yeah, man. It's yeah. something that CJ. It's all he can do is get back. CJ used to always, CJ used to always tell me this because his CJ son played ball in uh, college. Right. Premier, you know, Dev was doing this thing. Yeah. CJ used to always say, hey, no matter what, you got to let the child make his own decisions and be him and do him. You're going to see him come up, come about and come around, right. but you got to let him do him. And I'm glad that you, you let him, you know, you didn't just say, no, nah, no, nah, I'm about to move him to the front. He's just... And, you let him get down. You let him fall and get back up. And we love him, man. We and love Doug, the story. Good thing, again, that you said this is because me and my son relationship has gotten a lot better at this basketball because I don't talk to him about basketball. The mm. I don't even talk to him about basketball. When he comes see me now, he be like, he tell everybody now, shit, I'm just happy he don't never say nothing to me about basketball <laughs> no more because he, I know now that I'm doing what I'm supposed to right. do. Because your kid, we are we their daddy. Right. We with them all the time. Right. We always schooling them about something. They get tired of that. That's why they go to somebody else and listen to them and listen to somebody else Facts. who they, they look up to. Facts. They don't look up to us no more because they're getting tired of us. So they don't listen to us, and we got to understand that. You know what I'm saying? So when somebody else go and talk to them, and I'll be like, yo, man, just tell him this, tell him that. So I done got out of, out of in my mind to stop doing that with him because he gonna listen more because he gonna start coming to me saying, man, you see how that went, Pops? Woo, woo. And then I can say what I want He opened up the door. He opened it up to you instead of going with him every day talking about, man, you should have did this. You should have yeah. I don't even tell him to shoot no more. You know what I'm saying? I just be like, look at it. You know what I'm saying? Make him respect you. You know what I'm saying? That's all I say. I say, make him respect you. Do something. I text him. I say, be the difference maker. That's all I say to him. Be the difference maker. And that's what he has to look to, look forward to because, like I said, we their dad. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear that crap no more from us, especially at 30. He don't yeah. want to hear that no yeah. more. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's done and beyond that no more. And, and you know, only people do that is the, the parents that live through their kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's yeah. Swig, Let me think, well, with all that being said, I'm, I'm I'm thankful for both of you guys. Um, shedding that light right there because I got a son. I got two boys that you know, so I'm working with, and CJ to put me up on game like that. And hearing you say that right now, man, it's incredible. But we're gonna step away right now, y'all. Go pay some bills. We'll be back with the glove, GP. Once again, I am Dub C, and I am CJ Mack, and we're sitting here with GP. Yeah. The glove. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
We got work for sale. We got West Side Tees. We got work for sale. We got hoodies like this. We got work for sale. We got work for sale. We got work for sale. We got merch for sale. We're at dubc and cjmag.com. Get it. Get it. You can't open this B-boy shit. You got a bitch. Yeah. Welcome back to the Dub C and CJ Mack show. Once again, I am Dub C. And I'm still CJ Mack. What up, C Mack? Man, I'm good, man. We over here sitting with my partner, man. You know what I mean? This is, I just feel so honored that he, he jumped on the plane. It was man, crazy. It, 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 it feel good, man. It feel good because it's genuine. Yeah. It's genuine. It's genuine. We'll That's be having it. guests on the show and, you know, and everybody is, is getting theirs off. But what's crazy is, we done set up, we done chopped it up with this dude so many different times and places, and he always, everything he talk about, man, is so, you know, you can feel the compassion, you know, and I just love the fact that we got a chance to have him right here, right now, on this stage, on this platform. He came in and he gave us props on what we was doing, you know, on where we took it from nothing to building something right here. So I just want to continue to get some more game from GP, and um, maybe you can enlighten us on, you know, well, enlighten the youngsters on how you survive, you know, making it in the league and doing what you was doing. You said your father pretty much had you focus on doing what you was doing, but you was getting tested. Your manhood was getting tested. How do you deal with that, man? Because it seemed like a lot of these youngsters, they want to, they have an opportunity to do other things, but they want to, they want to, they want to, they want to stray off. Dub, that, you know what? We, we all need to talk about this. You know, everybody always talk about, you grew up in the streets. I grew up in this, I grew up in that. Okay, everybody done did that. But have you been there when one of your partners enrolled and, and killed somebody or did something like that? Have you ever uh, put your hand on a pistol and killed somebody? And, but you're a basketball player. Don't say you did that, because you're lying. You know what I'm saying? That ain't even the way to, to get out with it. When I was growing up in Oakland, California, I had one of the biggest dope dealers was, was my partner. You know what I'm saying? He was a dude that looked out for me. I could have went that way, but that wasn't my life. That wasn't what, what, what God put me on the earth to do. Did he used to tell you, nah, keep doing what you Absolutely. want? Absolutely. He called me, and that was the big thing too, because he respected my daddy, because my daddy was the, the father to everybody in them streets because they didn't have a daddy. So what happened was, is they would always tell me, yo, man, it's about to get down, man. You got to go home. You got something to look forward to. And that's a real partner. That's a real friend. A real friend will tell you that. Get up that out of here. Get up out of here, man, because you got something to look forward to. I, I, we ain't doing nothing good here, man. And this is the way we live our life. And I don't knock none of that because that's the way they had to survive. And I survived another way. So when we did that and I was seeing all the stuff and I was doing the stuff, I had partners and I had a daddy that had me straight. You know what I'm saying? And, and took me there. Now what we're doing nowadays is you want to be something that you really ain't. You're a hooper. Anybody is a basketball, football player, baseball player, whatever. Why you want to try to act tough about something that you know you can't act tough about? You know what I'm saying? Because if you put one of these young kids in the streets and fight a real one, he ain't going to be able to knock no out. He's going to probably get knocked out. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have 100 people around you to protect you. So be the basketball player you are because you still can be cool and you can still be down to earth. Dub said this earlier today. I come places and I act the same way. Right. I ain't going to act no different way. I'm just that dude, man. I just, I'm not going to say because y'all gave me all this money and y'all gave me all this fame and I'll be carrying this basketball player. I was like you when I was growing up. Right. I didn't never had that. Right. You just so happen I had it. So right. why should I change? Right. If I see my partners and I see y'all in the spot, I'm going to go holler at you. Right. I'm going to be like, what's happening? What's happening? But I got it in my mind. I know when to leave. I know when to cut. I know when it ain't time for me to close the club out. I know it ain't time for me to go in a hole in the wall or go to the after hours because that ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? Because I know it's haters out here and they want to get out. So I go and do what I got to do, but I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm not going to treat you no different. You the same person. I, you put your pants on like I put my pants on, do the same thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to treat you no different way. 
And that's why everybody always be like, oh, GP always, he everywhere. He, man, I'm not going to stop doing what I do, man. But I know not to hang out yeah. in the wrong places. Remember we said the rule, we don't close clubs down. Bro. We don't close clubs We don't close down. clubs. We don't, don't close, close clubs down, down man. We that's don't need to. Jumping. Y'all don't close clubs down. No, I'll never yeah. close them down. Get up out of there, man. If they talk about last call, I'll be telling C, man. Let's get up out of here, man. See, Let I've been around it. him since he was young. So I've seen a couple things to where people try to draw him into the drama yeah. when he was younger. You know what I'm saying? It's just like everybody else. Same thing that a lot of these dudes is faced with. Mm-hmm. But you were just, you were able to navigate it and, and, and know what was going on and Absolutely. not get sucked into the, to the drama. Because right. the, the vultures is out there, bro. You yeah. know, you got a kid out here got $100 million. You know what I'm saying? He trying to fit in, you know, with the vultures. The vultures is like, yup. You know what I'm saying? They want to the They want to go do yep. everything with you until, you, you, until you tell them they can't go. Right, right. <laughs> right. You know it's the same thing, and it's and it's like when you want to be validated and you want to be that tough guy, but you really not. But you you got all these other ones around you, and you getting the respect because people scared of you. That's what they they live in. They live in about. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's how I live it right now. So instead of you just being humble and be cool. And just chill. Everybody gonna like you anyway. Cause the dudes around you know you ain't tough. They know that. They know you not willing to go to jail. No. Nah, they they know that. You ain't messing your career up and doing all that stuff. But you will. But the one thing you guys, I, I really think that is messing these these young kids up is the social media. Oh yeah. The social media is killing so them. It you. might help you see with us. It's an avenue of a tool to get us paid and get money. Right. To them, it's about likes sure. and who like you and whatever popular I'm going to be. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, you to pull your camera out when you're doing something and videotape it and then go live is really crazy to me. Yeah. That's some crazy stuff to me. You know what I'm saying? But that's what this era is about. That's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? So they don't understand until you get older that that ain't what's happening. Mm-hmm. You don't want nobody to know where you at 24-7. Oh, yeah. Not at all. No, you oh, can't yeah. do that because you don't know what month somebody want to get at you or whatever's happening. Man, let's go get at it, whatever, because we know he's going to be there. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little different, and, and we got to understand it, like I said, about everything else. It, it, it's different. It's a different era. We smarter than that. We don't need to be every two minutes showing where we at. You know what I'm saying? And then post it so somebody can come over there and run up on us. But that is just the way it is, and that's the way it is. Because just think about CJ and Dub. What if we had that in our day? I had all this camera phones and people taking pictures. We probably wouldn't even be who we were are right yeah, now. No, you know what I'm saying? Right, we right. are probably, we wouldn't even probably, we would have been in trouble so many times because we done did so much stuff that it wouldn't have been cool for us to do it in our day. True. Right. You know what I'm saying? True. But now it's acceptable because every time that's all what they pull out, bang, bang. Then they own their phones. I, I got it and I coach Lincoln University right now, a university in Oakland, which is a startup school where I'm just trying to get so, the dudes right. out of the hood. Congratulations. Get, uh, thank you. And I'm trying to do that. But I got these kids understanding that all of y'all ain't going to go pro. Y'all ain't gonna go pro. Okay. So what are we gonna do next? Are we gonna learn how to to manage a a, a, a checking account? Hmm. Are we gonna ma- know how to read a contract? Are we gonna know how to become somebody more than what they think we gonna become? Because you can become popular as being a lawyer, a, a, a doctor, a teacher, or whatever, and be on this platform speaking to other people, giving knowledge to somebody else, and being popular that way. That's what you can do. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be like, everywhere we look, everybody on their phone. I got my players, when we get on the bus, we get to, we're to dinners, it's no phones. Because I want you to get a communication mm. level. Right. I want you to learn how to be a people's person. Yeah. Because one day you might be on a plane, sitting next to a billionaire that's, that look scrunchy. Mm. And he start talking to you and he, you give him knowledge and give him game about how educated you are. If you ch- exchange numbers with him and then next thing you know, he walk away and he say, that kid was so smart. I want to help him. 
And he call you in three months and say, man, I want to do something for you. I want to give you a job in my corporation. On, and I want to bring you up like this. We'll never know that'll happen if you don't know how to be a people's person right. and be on a, in, a, in that type of situation. Right. Right. And that's what we got to teach these kids because they think that they're going to be pros. Everybody ain't going to be no pro. And I tell them, out of 30 people in that room, probably want to become a pro. Mm -hmm. If you think about it. And that's good odds. That's good <laughs> odds. Right. That's great odds. That might not happen. That's great odds. Yeah. So I got to let them understand that we got to get values too after not trying to be an a athlete. Let's be something else. Let's make our life be something else, man, and learn how to go to school and whatever. You might not like it, but get up in there and just try. You know, learn something. Yeah, because you, you, you're dumb. That's what, what we always think about. If people always let people manage their money, and then all of a sudden they be like, "Oh man, he just stole ten million dollars for me." Why the heck wouldn't you pay attention to your money in the first place? First place. You ain't supposed to be doing that. You right. ain't supposed to be letting him manage ten million dollars and write checks and power attorney and do that stuff. Learn it yourself. Mm. Learn it yourself. Mm. That part. That part. Do, do you plan on uh, coaching the NBA? Still, I, know I don't want to. I, you know what, you guys? I, I I think my journey is to be with the younger kids, these kids hmm. that's coming out of these streets. I like to go and get some guys that did a journey like my son. Give them an opportunity. Give them something. Give them a knowledge of an old school type of dude that give them that old school coaching. Because right now, who going to listen to you if one guy got drafted number one in 19 and you give him 50 million? Then another one get drafted the next day, you give him 50 million. Then the next one, the next year, three. And you got three youngsters. Who gonna listen to who? Mm. You don't have no guidance because you don't have an OG to be telling them, I've been through this already. Go this route and be this route and hold them accountable for something. Mm. So I gotta hold them accountable for something because if I go to the NBA, I'm gonna be with dudes that's making 200, 300 million dollars. Yeah. They ain't listening. They don't wanna listen. They ain't listening to me. Right. So I want somebody that wanna be hungry who gotta get to that level. And by the time they get to that level, I done gave them a knowledge of something that they already know. And they say, yo, well, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna do it the right way, Dope. not the wrong way. Do you feel that 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 um that plays a role right now? Because we always hear a lot of people say, well, back in the days, they everybody on the team played like this. Now you got guys who might be just out there playing and really don't care if they lose. They don't. I mean, they, you know, they, they, they don't want to lose, but they, they really don't. don't care because they're making a certain amount of money. Absolutely. Do you feel like the money is what changed the way that, it, you know, what it, a lot of these players is thinking right now? Absolutely. I, I, I think when you get, you making 30 and $40 million a year, and then all of a sudden you think about, okay, I can come back next year and try to get it this year. A value of a championship is not like that anymore. Not in this, this era in this league. The value is, is what next endorsement I'm going to get, what kind of money I'm going to make, how much I'm going to be worth this, what I'm going to do. Wow. A lot of them don't do that. And Dub, let me, let me tell you something. I, I believe in this to a fullest. If Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Dr. J, and Larry Bird was in a room, and they were sitting over there, and I walk in that room, I don't care what the hell I'm doing. I'm going to go and talk to them first and give them homage because they are OGs and they, they guided, they painted the, the way to me, for me. Right. Just like these young rappers should do to y'all too. Wherever they see you, I don't care where it is, they should go out of their way to come and say, hey man. Dap you up. Dap. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. But some of these kids don't do that because they think that they too high, more higher than the game. And they more higher than whatever mm. it is. And I don't like dealing with kids like that. And I don't say nothing to them because it's no respect. And the respect has to be there. So why put yourself in a position? Wow. I feel you. Why put yourself in a position wow. where you got to deal with that? Right. And you can make, make more of a difference. With the younger ones the that's young coming ones. up. That because you guys just dub me because I know myself, I'm going to put my hands on one of them. Right. You know what I'm that saying? Cool. And then yeah. I'm, I'm and then yeah. I'm gonna get fired anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because if you say something disrespectful to me right. when I'm trying to help you, right, and you say something foul, I'm gonna put my hands on you. Because it ain't gonna work like that. You, you know, know what, what comes to mind, man? What we said earlier, you being a Hall of Famer. Man, that's something you fought for, man, for your whole career. You fought to win a championship, you fought to be a Hall of Famer. 
I don't know if some of these dudes could care less about being a Hall of Famer no more. No. They don't. You know what I'm saying? They don't. So that kind of takes away from the tradition of what this thing is, man. Right. So it's good for people like you to keep it and in, instill in, in it in the younger ones so they can have that dream, bro, because that's something amazing. Yeah. But, like see, said, but you know, see, I didn't ever wake up saying I'm going to be a Hall of Famer or I'm going to be in the top 75. I never woke up saying that. I never thought that I was going to be that at the age of 10 and 12 and 13, 14 years old. I never knew that I was going to be that way. So that is a privilege for me. Yeah. Just when I just got on the top 75 two years ago, when I walked in that room and sat in that room and was around all them OGs, that was amazing to me, man. I was in awe. Hey, I'm, could I get your autograph, man? Man, could I woo woo this? Right. Could I get your number, man, so I could ever talk to you right. or whatever? That is, it was a privilege to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then. Money came by that. Right. And then my youngster, Dame Lillard, he was like, man, OG, I'm amazed with this, man. I don't even supposed to be here. I mean, I'm too young to be in this kind of class. I said, no, you earned what you need to get. Mm -hmm. It was earned, and that's what God gave you. So take it and embrace it. And what he did was he went around and took pictures with everybody. Shout out to Dane. Every yeah. OG he went out there and took pictures with. And that's how he is because his daddy is an OG on the streets of Oakland. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I look up to his daddy. Mm, sure. You know what I'm sure. saying? Because sure. I've seen his daddy do whatever. You know what I'm saying? But he my OG. So that's how it went down. You know what I'm saying? So I think if you didn't just, have that mentality, I, I don't think you would have got a championship. Right. Because you was towards the end of your career when you got your championship. Absolutely. And you could have just hung it up a long time ago and been like, well, I made money. I'm good. But your values, like you said, championship, um, be becoming a Hall of Famer, not really chasing that to be, not right. playing to be, only not playing only to become a Hall of Famer. I think by you having that passion, like we got the passion of doing it because we love it and we pay homage to the game. Right. The game that we're involved in is similar to hip hop. Mm -hmm. Your story is funny because actually it's, it's, it's not funny. It's funny, but when I say it's funny, it's we sit here and we want to be the best when we rap. In hip hop, that's why you see cats wearing the chains. Why you see a lot of rappers wearing chains and being braggadocious. It's all about being the best, mm -hmm. being the best. But at some point in time, you got to know what game you're in and how to play the game. You can't step out of that character Absolutely. out here in these streets thinking that you're that character in that studio. Right. You got to know that this is, you know, this is it. And the target that you had to be the best at what you was doing, I, will, I, I love the fact that you want to take that right there, that mentality, and give it to the young. To shout out to Lincoln University, keep doing your thing. And, but I would love to see you out there too share some of this game to some of the youngsters in the NBA yeah. because they need that. We need that. Right. We need to see you up there. So whatever you do, we're going to support you on that right there. But I just, like I said, when it comes to coaching and stuff like that, I love the fact that that mentality is what you're giving the youngsters out there yeah. because it's similar to us coming up in the, in, in the rap game. Yeah, and it's the same though, though, Dub. When you if you go to a concert and then you go in the back and you pull one of the the new youngsters uh -huh. to the side and give them game, I do that all the time when right. I'm at these games. When I go to my son's them game, I wait in the end, and all them guys be coming by me. You know, they be like, "Oh, gee, whatever," and I pull them to the side and I be like, "Look here, man. I don't care about." All this competing against the area. I'm going to tell you what I think about you. Right. What I think you need to work on and what you need to get down with. You know, I'm never negative to none of them. I like the ones that want to want the game and want to ask about the game. Um, Zion Williams, the last game of Golden State when they played in regular season. First thing that young kid came over and he's like, oh, gee, could I come and hang out with you this summer? Because I want to know the game about defense. Hmm. And he coming this summer to work out with me for two weeks. See, when you get people like that, and old, little youngsters that have a lot of ability and, and can do it and want to go and do something else, that's what I know I'm getting to. I'm getting the message out to people. You know what I'm saying? What and I'm going to work with him. You know right. what I'm saying? Because I just think if he stays on the floor and gets to get A, he, he a beast. Oh, yeah. Right. He's a beast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But well, what else you, we got looking forward to uh, coming from you besides these hands later on tonight? 
<laughs> well, after, after boy, the Warriors now I'm a, I, I, man, I'm gonna film mine. After the so Warriors I can give it to you, Dub. I'm gonna send it you to you. You know what I mean? Uh, is there anything else you have any plans for besides, you know, bandages and shit like that? <laughs> is there anything else you need, oh, sir? You know uh, what? You know what I mean? All I do, like I said, I I, I love y'all for what y'all doing, man. You know, because we, you know, we 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 was together for a long period of time. I just try to do things the right way. You know what I'm saying? And you two are doing the right way in the hip hop game and the rap game and all that. And all I'm just trying to do is it's in a sports game. You know what I'm saying? I'm just fortunate that I got a son that's doing it the right way. And mm -hmm. a lot of people like him and they see what I have done with my son. And I take it to that level. Mm -hmm. I just want people to understand it like us. I just want people to understand that we're not dummies. You know what Fall I'm saying? We're, we're not dummies. We know what we're doing. We know how to do it. We want to do it. Businesses come out. You guys know I got the cannabis company. I got the tech company. You know, I got I got a show coming out. There's a trash talk. Um, I'm trying to put a podcast up right there now. We go. Utilize and and y'all going to be on it the first oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Utilize, yeah. Utilize, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 what people, yeah, and what people don't understand is it's going to be the first father son basketball. You know what I'm oh, saying? So cool. is Lil Gary gonna be be my co-host, and oh, it's gonna dope. be something like that's, that's gonna be yeah, cool. Gonna be and dope. you know, we, you know, Showtime is we try to pick it up and all that type of stuff. So we just try. I'm just trying to make it happen. You coming back? You said the coach uh, for Big Three. Yeah, and I'm going with Ice Cube with the Big Three. My guy Cube, and I know that y'all. Shout out Cube. Yeah, out. he my guy. You know, I'm like y'all my guy. And I'm going to stick with him through thick and thin. Yeah. I want the big three to be that what it's going to be. Big you three. know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. That's why I haven't left it, nothing. I'm right. trying to get it to the point where he knows where it's at. He had a a, a, um, a, a, a vision. Q vision. He had a Q vision. <laughs> right. And he made that vision, right? And you know how Q is. He big. So right, right, he right. made that vision and he gave it back to the players. And we got to keep doing that. It's been going on for six years now. Yeah. It's doing big, man. He, he bring people like y'all out to, to rap at halftime. Yeah. People ain't never seen and get the, right. get the chance to get yeah. with. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we got to do. And we got to stay with that. We just got to be black people helping black people. Don't be jealous because of Cube's big three. Make right. it be better. You there know what go. I'm saying? And I'm, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no parts of... Doing something else like like Q. That's Q thing. Right. And I'm gonna try to make it every time sure. as better as I as he wanted to be, and I'm gonna be right there to help him. Sure. Man, sure. well you're not only a Hall of Fame basketball player, you're a Hall of Fame person, man. You know, and that's coming from somebody who's been hanging with you for a while and can still stand your shit talking. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming, brother. Always a we pleasure. We appreciate thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. As always, thank man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, GP. Keep doing your thing. I, 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 before we get out of here, I want to know, where were you at when you first heard the name, or where did you get the name, the club, from? Dub, everybody uh, asked me this, and it was 93, mm -hmm. 93, 94. We was in the Western Conference Finals playing against Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson was a premier point guard then. He was the number one point mm -hmm. guard. You remember he was averaging like 25, 26. They had Charles Barkley on there. Charles had yeah. just won the MVP. They were like the top team, and we had took them to game seven. So in game six, I had been holding Kevin Johnson to like 13 points, and he was averaging 26 for the, for the, for the whole year. Mm. And all of a sudden, after it was game six, we won. I had like 20-something. Kevin had like 13. Good game. He was playing well. My cousin just hit me on the phone. Glove, glove. I was like, man, I don't know who this is and hung up, right? <laughs> and then he hit me right back. He was like, cuz, man, come on now, this is me, this is me. This is cuz, this is your cuz. I was like, man, why are you calling me the glove, dude? I'm like, man, but I, what you doing? He said, me and my frat brothers is sitting here right now. And one of my frat brothers say, man, your cousin got Kevin Johnson like a baseball in a glove wrapped so tight when he <laughs> catch that thing that he can't move. <laughs> and it took off ever since. And now that's become mm -hmm. one of the top nicknames in sports basketball or that's anything, dope, man. any it. sports that's anything. Dope, man. The I, glove. I would think yeah. it would look like a sports writer would have gave him the name. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Pops. My cousin, yeah, yeah. My cousin gave it to me. Yeah. Man. My first cousin, my, my first cousin, my, my dad's sister, 
son, you know, he just gave it to me, man. And, and it, it, it popped off to be one of the top nicknames ever. People don't even call me GP or, you know, the homie, whatever. Yeah. They, they call me Glove. Right. Yeah. So everybody ever talk about it. I walk on anything. I walk anywhere. Glove, what's Glove. up? Glove. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. all they do. Glove. Yeah. Glove. Yeah. Glove. Yeah. Glove. Yeah. That's his Glove. Yeah. Glove. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and also, too, we can't let you get up out of here without sharing your experience of playing with Kobe. Rest in, peace. rest in peace, man. You know, that still hurts me to the day that a good soul and a good you know, human being like mm. that got took it away from this, this earth way too early. It was a plan that it, that it had to happen. You know what I'm yeah, saying? God's it it happened. It was God's plan to make it be known like that. But the best thing about that is when I got to play here and I played here that season, and he was going through the things that he was going through, what he was doing, what happened happened to right. him. I became his mentor on that team. Mm. So I was with him every day. For sure. Carl Malone was with Shaq, and I was with Kobe. So I got to know him as a little brother. I got to know how the feeling of him, of what he was feeling. He was a different kid. If he didn't have a good game and he had 35 and somebody did something to him, and I, he came to me one day and he said, uh, OG, what did I do wrong? And I said, Kobe, this is what you did wrong. He took his clothes off, went and got his practice jerseys on, and went into the practice facility and worked out mm -hmm. until 3 o'clock in the morning after we had a basketball game. Wow. That how dedicated he was to anything. And people would say he was different. He was arrogant or whatever. You have to be arrogant to be who you are. It goes back to what we're talking about, wanting to be the best. Want to be the best. You know, when the day he came to me at All-Star Game and asked me to show him how to play defense and get over defense, get over picks and stuff like that. And we sat out there at halftime in the middle of the thing with everybody filming us. And I didn't care because that's what I like about kids who want to know that. Halftime of at the All-Star All Game. game. Wow. And they're filming us, me teaching him how to get over and then all of a sudden he won nine straight first team NBA all mm, uh, NBA done. defensive teams. I'm just done. like me. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> that was the type of kid he was. And then everybody Amazing. don't understand that that's what type of kid he was. And then he got so close with my kids that right before he passed, he had just talked to little Gary, sitting in Gary's shoes, because that's the only shoe Gary wears now is Kobe's. And it was just amazing that, and then I had talked to him because he was just getting in the Hall of Fame. You know, he, had, he was about to get in the Hall of Fame, he talking about how he was going to do his speech. And then all of a sudden, I get off a plane and I hear that, that stuff. Hmm. I really broke right. down at, yeah. on that wow. when I was going to TNT. Wow. And that was just crazy for me to, to hear that. And it just, it, it always chokes me up because I still think he should be here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he should, he should be given knowledge because he was just about to turn women's basketball around. He was just about him and his daughter was going to turn basketball around mm, right. of women's. And, but, you know, we can look it on and look on his legacy and he's always going to be big. He's always going to be big. Yeah, yeah. but like CJ said, man, um, we appreciate you coming. Thank you from the bottom of our heart, not just for being an NBA player, but being one of ours, being somebody that we could look, look up to that shared the same struggle. Um, but also, too, was still here and want to share that game. Yeah. Not just share the struggle, but want to share that game. I thank you, man. Thank you for being a Laker. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't play for quite a few teams. Yeah, you know, Lil G, you know, I love hey. you, man. But... Hey, man. <laughs> thank you for being a Laker, no, man. Yes, love you, man. And um, thank you, man. Thank you once again. Thank you for coming on the Dub CJ CJ Max show, man. And we're going to try our hardest, man, to uphold that uh, that mentality getting out here and spreading that love. Y'all will. And this is a this is a platform. Just yeah. doing stuff like this. And I think got them lights. Got them lights. Got yes, them lights. Sir. GB. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it's just me just supporting y'all. Yeah, we just got to keep getting our friends up under here and keep supporting y'all so y'all can make this big and get get somebody to have a goal. Yes. Some of these, these other youngsters that's in the game and in hip hop to have a goal. Yes. You always have a goal of this because y'all going to reach more out for who we are and see these type of yeah. interviews and these dudes to know really what we all about. That's yeah. what we do. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. That's what we do on the Dub C and CJ Mac show. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing installment. I am CJ Mac and I am Dub C and this is the Gloves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Skip, skip. <laughs> Worldwide, baby. <laughs> <laughs>